Thank you so much. Very nice feedback. Oh, thank you. So how great is this get together? You know, one of the things that I thought as I was sitting backstage and listening is the fact that the theme really is that you are the heart of public health. And so let's acknowledge the fact that you are the heart of public health. So you've been sitting for a little bit, let's get up and get those hearts moving a tiny bit. Okay, stretch a little bit, this is great. Move those legs. And if you've not introduced yourself to the person to the left of you or the right of you, please do so. And the next thing you do is thank those people for being part of the mission. You are the heart of public health. If you want to keep standing, that's fine. Make yourselves comfortable. You know, it's always a little bit nerve-wracking when you're sitting here or standing on stage in front of your former boss. Ladies and gentlemen, the former, the 18th Surgeon General of the United States, Dr. Regina Benjamin. So when she left a little over a year ago, she handed the keys to me and said, keep things moving, keep them progressing, because we're on a mission. It's a mission that she so boldly started and one that we continue each and every day. How long this mission lasts in my hands, I don't know, but does it matter? Because each and every day, we, our team, wakes up and says, there is something we need to do. There is progress that we need to make when it comes to public health. Now, first and foremost, I send along greetings from the Department of Health and Human Services, from the Office of the Assistant Secretary for Health, and from the Office of the Surgeon General. New Orleans is a special place for me because not that long ago, in fact, 65 years ago, just a few short feet from this very location, a young Mikola and Alha Lushniak stepped off a transatlantic boat that transported them from the refugee camps in post-World War II Germany. They were from Ukraine. And this is where the Lushniaks first stepped on American soil. And I got to tell you, you know, in terms of saying that one is humbled and blessed to be riding that wave. It started 65 years ago with two young people scared out of their minds, leaving behind what they knew to pursue a better life. And when I think back to that point, 65 years ago, that's where the passion began for public health. That's where it began. My father was a laborer. I'm a proud member of the occupational health section that's celebrating its centennial here. And in the nearly 27 years that I've been wearing, proud to be wearing the uniform of the US Public Health Service Commission Corps, that pursuit has continued. So let's talk about the big issue here. First and foremost, we're talking about public health. And I really wanna go back to really even getting to the point of, of lexicon. Let's remind ourselves of the definition of health and remind ourselves this early in the meeting of the responsibility that falls upon our shoulders. I love the World Health Organization definition of health. And I always tell people for a second now, everybody, close your eyes and listen to this. Because if you've not heard it for a while, remind yourselves that you are the heart of this. For health is the complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Complete physical, mental, and social well-being. And if you want to burden yourself with that, that's in fact what we do in public health. 
It's not the whole idea of just the elimination of diseases or infirmity. It's not the fact that we are pointed towards curative processes. We're here to try to make it completely right. And the battles have continued for a long time. You know, we go back in time, and, and you know, let's go back, 1872. What happened in 1872? The formation of the American Public Health Association, Atlantic City. Who was out there at that meeting back then? Anyone? <laughs> And in fact, the connectivity between the Office of the Surgeon General and the APHA took place at that meeting. For the first, at that time called supervising surgeon, now denoted as the first Surgeon General of the United States, was John, John Maynard Woodworth. And he, in fact, was present there. Part of this interconnectivity between the federal side of the House and an organization that, in fact, had a similar mission which is to make this all right. The physical, mental, and social well-being of our people. 1872. Let's go back even a little bit more recent in times. 1964, 50 years ago, in January, what happened? Surgeon General Luther Terry, again, a person who wore a similar uniform at the prompting of several organizations, including the American Public Health Association, who had sent a letter to the newly elected John F. Kennedy shortly before that, and said, hey, we have a problem. We have a problem in this country because this whole tobacco use scenario is gone hog wild. And we want someone to study this. And in January 1964, after a year and a half, of research, of looking at the evidence, a report comes out. And I want to remind you of the subtlety of the conclusion of that report. For that report said, in almost this purity of government language, but one that is, if you really listen to it, so right on, it said, cigarette smoking is a significant hazard in the United States or a hazard of significance in the United States to warrant appropriate remedial action. <laughs> That's what it said. And yet in that subtle frame, in that subtle choice of words, we had 50 years of activism led originally by the APHA and continued to be led by the APHA. 50 years later, did we solve the problem? You know, 1964 we had 43% of our population that smoked. 50 years later, we're down to 18%. Hurrah! But we have 480,000 people each and every year dying from tobacco-related illness at a cost of $289 billion per year. If we allow current trends to continue, 5.6 million kids now alive will die prematurely from tobacco use. How do we get to where we want to go? And we talk about having the healthiest nation on this planet in a generation. Built into that is, in fact, having a tobacco-free generation in the generation. And it starts with the work you're doing. For 50 years, we've been fighting this. And 50 years later, let's hoop and holler for New Orleans to go smoke-free in the casinos and the bars and the restaurants. Let's stamp our feet until they hear us. Because in this 21st century model, we want to get to a place where this is solved. One of the things I have on my door of my office is that sense of aspirations and what could be. And I always recommend to people in public health, you know, this is just my recommendation. I'm just a lowly acting Surgeon General. <laughs> but in the midst of all that, I have the definition of health on my board to remind me the burden that is on our shoulders each and every day of what we're trying to achieve. And then I have a morbidity and mortality weekly report from 1999 that talked about the 10 accomplishments of public health in the 20th century. And what that does is reminds me 
that we can achieve what we want to achieve, that it is possible, that the idea of us working together, of forging those partnerships, of working, yes, Dr. Benjamin, with your national prevention strategy, working with the National Prevention Council, pointing out the fact that we have to achieve the strategies within the national prevention, I prevention ideal that includes healthy and safe community environments. It includes clinical and community preventive services. It includes empowered people. One of the speakers earlier talked about the solution to our problem is that we as Americans, I as the son of immigrants, know we don't like to be told what to do. But give me the information empower me to make the right choice, and those choices will be made. And then the last component of that strategy, of those strategic priorities, is the issue we've talked about, the concept of healthography, which is we need to eliminate the health disparities that exist in this country. Shame on us if we have a city like my hometown, Chicago, or in New Orleans, Whereas the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Commission came out and said that a major determinant, a major factor on our health as individuals that even goes beyond our genetics is our zip code? That's what we're told? And we're supposed to accept that? Ladies and gentlemen, we have a pursuit. We have something to say as public health leaders. Let's boldly go out and keep yelling and screaming and with a renewed passion that happens at meetings like this. Don't take a second place. We go for the gold medal of public health. And we have to refocus our nation. That health of the nation is, in fact, the national natural resource, that it goes beyond everything else. For without a healthy people, we are nothing. Without a healthy people, we have no future. Join me in this pursuit. And let's spend time discussing, talking, learning from each other, and yes, at times arguing with each other. But let's get it right. For we cannot afford to fail. Thank you so much.